what is communion. Uh, I'm going to read a few verses from 1 Corinthians 10 and then jump over to a few verses in chapter 11. Uh, we're going to share communion together and then uh, we have something special prepared for you today. But let's look quickly. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, uh, beginning in verse 14. Paul says, Therefore, my dear friends, free, flee from idolatry. I speak to sensible people. Judge for yourselves what I say. Is not the cup of thanksgiving for which we give thanks a fellowship in the blood of Christ? And is not the bread that we break a fellowship in the body of Christ? Because there is one loaf, we who are many are one body, for we all share the one loaf. Now jumping over to chapter 11 and verse 23, let's read the communion words that are so familiar to us here at Harvest Time. 1 Corinthians 11, reading at verse 23, Paul says, For, I for what I receive from the Lord, I also pass on to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Looking at verse 27. So then whoever eats the bread and drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of sinning against the body and blood of the Lord, Therefore, everyone ought to examine himself before he eats of the bread and drinks from the cup. Let's pray. And uh, as we pray this morning, let's just join our hearts together and lift up the people in the community of Umpaqua, Oregon, that were affected by the shooting on Thursday. Uh, let's pray that the God of all comfort will come and minister his peace and his healing to that community. Would you pray together with me? Father, thank you for this morning. Thank you for the people you love so much. Thank you for your presence here. Father, today we join our hearts together, Lord, and we lift up before you the community of Umpaqua, Oregon, Lord. Father, we lift up the campus of this college, Lord, that has been so traumatized by this shooting. Father, we pray for the families of everyone, Lord, who perished in this shooting. Lord, we pray for fathers and mothers, for siblings and friends, Lord. Father, we pray that the peace of God that passes understanding, Lord, would settle upon their hearts, upon their minds, Lord. We pray for the victims of the shooting that are recovering, Lord, from their wounds. And Father, we pray for all the students and faculty that are recovering from emotional wounds. God, would you come and bring help from heaven? Lord, we pray that you would just descend upon that community with your presence. And Father, we pray that what the enemy meant for destruction, Lord, you would take in turn and that you would use for good, Lord. We pray for a spiritual renewal in that community, Lord. And Father, we just thank you now for your presence here with us as we share the beautiful act of worship that is communion. Thank you in the mighty name of Jesus. If your heart agrees with that, would you just say amen and amen with me. Well, today we're going to change things up a little bit. If you're worshiping with us for the first time, you came on a good day. Our ministry leaders have prepared a ministry fair for you in the lower parking lot behind the church building. And in just a few minutes, we're going to invite you to go down to the tent and enjoy the ministry fair. This is an opportunity for you to get involved with the many ministries of our church. If you only worship with us here on weekends at harvest time, Maybe it's time to get a little bit more deeply involved. On Wednesday evenings, we have tremendous opportunities for the whole family. We have an excellent scouting program for boys and girls. This sanctuary is going to get renovated into the new home for our youth group. And our teenagers have already taken it over on Wednesday evenings. We had 90 uh, middle school and high school students and youth group this last Wednesday evening here in the sanctuary. We have uh, many discipleship classes for adults uh, that happen several different days a week. 
Uh, right now, Pastor Nick is teaching on the book of Genesis uh, on Wednesday evenings, and I want to tell you, you will not find a better Bible teacher anywhere than Pastor Nick. And uh, maybe you've just gotten out of the habit of going to Bible study. Uh, maybe the busyness of life, the responsibility of your kids kept you from that, but maybe this is a good season for you to get involved again. Many different prayer groups that we have that meet all through the week. Um, maybe you should join one of them. We have a brand new worship night starting for young adults tonight at 7.30 in the sanctuary. Uh, maybe you should be part of that. Um, the ministry fair is a, also an opportunity for you to volunteer to serve God by serving others. Uh, serving is a great way to make new friends. Um, right now, before our new building is finished, uh, one crowd rushes in, uh, the next crowd rushes out, and there's not a lot of opportunity, perhaps, to get to know people. But um, if you sign up to serve, you'll make some new friends. Uh, you'll become a part. Uh, we have some great food prepared for you downstairs. Uh, so uh, the second service, they weren't big eaters, so everything has to go at the end of third service. So you have to go down. Uh, and there's a little tent. Next to the big tent, there's a little tent. That's where the really good food is. And uh, that's to meet people who are new to our fellowship. So uh, if you've only recently started attending Harvest Time and we've never had a chance to shake your hand to get to learn your name, my wife and I will be in that smaller tent to the side and we'd love the opportunity to greet you and just to get to know you a little bit before the morning is over. All right, just before we head downstairs, we're going to receive communion together. And I want to share with you three quick thoughts about what is communion. Three quick thoughts about communion. First of all, Communion is an act of worship. In 1 Corinthians chapter 10, Paul says that communion is an act of worship during which God is present in a special way. Communion is a celebration of who God is. He is the God who revealed himself in the incarnation of Jesus Christ. He's the God who left the glory of heaven and who put on a body of human flesh and blood and came to earth and gave himself as a sacrifice for our sins. And the bread and the cup on the table symbolize who God is. It symbolizes what he's done. Communion is thankfulness for what God has provided for me personally. On the night that Jesus was betrayed, he took bread and a cup and he gave thanks for it. And when I come to this table set with the bread and set with the cup, I give thanks that I have been the recipient of the provision that these emblems symbolize. The forgiveness that Christ purchased on the cross, I have received personally the cleansing from sin, the freedom from sin that Christ purchased on the cross, I have received the new relationship with God the Father that Jesus made possible on the cross, I have received. Communion is an act of worship during which God is present with us in a special way. You know, to those of us who belong to him, he's always with us. But when we gather for worship, he's with us in an even more special way. His authority is with us to subdue the enemy and to send him running away from us. When we're listening to the preaching of the word, he's with us in another way, giving us guidance. And when we gather at this table, he is with us in a very distinct way. He renews our weary spirit. He refreshes the joy of our salvation. That word remembrance is a special word. Do this in remembrance of me. It means to vividly recall, to relive the experience, to, to feel the feelings all over again. And I believe that that's what happens to us during communion. It reminds us of that moment when we first believed on him, when his love came flooding into our life, when his grace and his mercy overwhelmed us. And in this moment at the table, we feel that sense of awe all over again. I also believe that God is present during communion in a very special way to minister healing to our physical bodies. What is communion? Three quick thoughts. Communion is an act of worship. And second, communion is an act of faith. Communion is an expression of faith that we believe that God has acted in human history. 
When we come to this table, we're testifying that we believe that there was a man called Jesus of Nazareth, that he was the promised Jewish Messiah and the Son of God. We testify that we believe that on the night he was betrayed, he took bread and broke it and he took a cup and blessed it in the upper room. We testify that we believe that he was crucified on a Roman cross as God's spotless Passover lamb and that God raised him from the dead on the third day. We testify that we believe that his blood inaugurated a new covenant that supersedes the old covenant and accomplishes a spiritual transformation that the old covenant never could. Communion is an expression of faith that I'm forgiven in him. When we come to this table to receive the bread and the cup, we come with a joyful confidence in our spirit, knowing that because we believe we have received already everything that this table symbolizes. This is my favorite one. Communion is an expression of faith that Christ is coming at the end of human history and that I will share a banquet with him then. Beloved, communion is past, it is present, and it is future. Communion commemorates the upper room and the cross. Communion celebrates the benefits of the cross that we are experiencing right now. And communion also anticipates Christ's return to the earth and the banquet that we will share with him then. Communion is a powerful statement of hope in the midst of a tumultuous world. Thursday in Oregon, a 26-year-old systematically executed Christians on a college campus. But this table gives me hope because it reminds me that Jesus is coming again. Christians in the Middle East are being tortured. They're being crucified. Women and little girls are being sold by ISIS into sex slavery. While little Christian children are alive, ISIS is harvesting organs from their bodies and selling them on the black market in Saudi Arabia and in Turkey. But this table gives me hope because it reminds me that Jesus is coming again. Russia and China and Iran are teaming up in Syria to take control of the entire Middle East. What could possibly go wrong there? But this table gives me hope because it reminds me that Jesus is coming again. And when he comes again, he will administer perfect justice. He will make right every wrong. He will punish every evildoer. He will reward every faithful believer in him. And listen, then the Bible says we will sit down and we will eat. In the New Testament, there's only one designation for this table. It's the Lord's table. It's the Lord's Supper. Jesus was the host in the upper room and his disciples were the honored guests. And every time we gather at this table, Jesus is the real host, not the pastor. We are all his honored guests. And at the marriage supper of the Lamb, at the end of this age, Jesus again will be the host at that table, and we will all be his honored guests. Do you know what Jesus said in Luke 12, 37? Jesus said that he himself will wait on us at that supper. He will serve us himself. Listen, that's a thought so sublime that if you wrap your head around it, it'll make you speak in tongues. What is communion? Three quick thoughts. It's an act of worship, it's an act of faith, and finally this, communion is an act of bonding. I'm gonna ask those that are going to wait on us if they'd gather in the back and prepare to serve us. Communion is an act of bonding. Communion binds us with all believers in Christ throughout history. Paul says something awesome in 1 Corinthians 10. He says that communion is a spiritual experience that is consistent with the faith of the Old Testament patriarchs and saints and prophets. Communion is the next step forward in salvation history initiated by Yeshua himself. It is the continuation of the Passover celebration in Christ who has become our Passover. 
When we gather at this table, we are bonding in faith with the saints of the Old Testament. Their faith looked ahead to Messiah. Our faith looks back to Messiah, but it is the same faith. When we gather at this table, we're practicing the faith of Abraham and Isaac and Jacob. We're practicing the faith of Moses and Joshua and David and Isaiah. Paul says that the forefathers of the Jewish people are also the forefathers of the Christian church. When we gather at this table, we're practicing the faith of the 12 that were gathered in the upper room with Jesus. When we gather at this table, we're practicing the faith of the 120 that were gathered in the upper room on the day of Pentecost. We're practicing the faith of Stephen and Barnabas and Paul and Silas and Luke and Timothy and John Mark. We're bonding with all believers of all time who have approached this table in faith. Communion also binds us together as a local body in our common experience in Christ. Paul says that communion has a unifying effect in a local church. Though we come from many different walks of life, though we are male and female, though we are Jew and Gentile, though we are different ethnicities and nationalities and skin colors, though we have vastly different life experiences, though we have different interests and preferences, we share a common experience now that totally trumps every other difference. We've all had an encounter with Jesus that has changed us forever. Paul says that at this table, a supernatural koinonia, a supernatural fellowship occurs. We bond with Christ and Christ bonds us to one another into a unique community that is unlike anything else on the face of the earth. Communion reminds us that we're all equal in Christ. You know, when people are gathered together at a table to eat, they are all regarded as equals. They all sit at a level table, do they not? They all share the same food, do they not? The table isn't higher at one end where the important people are and lower at the other end where the less important people are. They don't bring out the good food first for the important people and then serve lousy food to the unimportant people. No, even if you're a peasant, when you're invited to the table of the king, you're treated on par with the king. And so it is at the Lord's table. <laughs> Communion helps us to forgive others when we're struggling. Communion reminds us that God in Christ has forgiven us the sum total of all of our sins. He's forgiven us a debt that we could never ever repay. And if God has forgiven us all, then surely we can forgive whatever it is we're holding against someone else. Not in our strength, but in his. Isn't it amazing that Jesus instituted the meal that supernaturally brings us together on the very night that Judas betrayed him and that all the rest abandoned him? If you're struggling to forgive someone, as you come to this table, simply say, Lord, thank you for forgiving me and now give me the grace to forgive others. At the end of 1 Corinthians 11, Paul issues a warning against receiving communion in an unworthy manner. Now listen, we should take note. Paul doesn't say not to come to the table unworthily. He says not to come to the table in an unworthy manner. The distinction is important. Paul doesn't mean that if we've sinned in the last week, we can't come and approach this table, though certainly we should confess our sins and receive his cleansing. But what Paul means specifically here is that we should approach this table with our heart in the right place towards our fellow believers in the body of Christ. We should approach this table with a deep sense of belonging to one another in him. We should approach this table with a sense of being equals in him. We should approach this table with a forgiven heart and with a forgiving heart. What is communion? Three quick thoughts. It's an act of worship. It's an act of faith. And it's an act of bonding. Beloved, as we approach this table today, let's come with hearts that are full of celebration. 
Let's approach this table with thanksgiving today. Let's approach with awe and wonder at who God is and what he's done for us. Let's approach with a sense of holy anticipation. Beloved, listen, God is here. God is here. God is here with us. And let's approach this table with love for one another. Would you stand with me this morning? And would you give Jesus a great big praise in this place today?